today's video, we see even more models showing snowstorms in the upcoming medium to long range as we flip from a very warm and mild pattern that we're about to move into into something that is a lot colder a lot more arctic as we see our polar vortex split and become a lot more in play we see two separate opportunities for snowstorms that we're going to point out today so be sure to pay close attention to the timing of all of these as we try to kind of narrow down the possibilities at this point Let's go ahead and start with our European model. And this one does have an interesting system uh, popping up at some point during the model run, but we're gonna start out talking about this milder phase. Currently, we actually have a bit of a wintry system in the Northeast. We could see mixed precipitation. We're obviously not in the coldest phase right now, so this isn't the coldest storm. We do also have some snowfall occurring for the Northwest there, as you can see. That's all for today, and as we move towards tomorrow on Thursday the 8th, what we're seeing is a stronger low developing here for Iowa and Missouri. Possibly going to see some thunderstorm and severe weather activity underneath. That's definitely something that needs to be paid attention to, as we can see a very intense trough in the west, ridge in the east pattern. This is going to allow for a lot milder air and even humid air to develop in this region, which is going to become a lot more sustainable for thunderstorm activity. As this trough digs into the west, though, we can see the snowfall opportunities skyrocket, with snowfall happening in the Cascades, as well as the majority of the Rockies at this point, again, as soon as tomorrow. As we keep going through, though, as we reach towards Friday the 9th, we can see a lot of this thunder thunderstorm activity is now happening for states like Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, Alabama as well, and then entering into states like Georgia. Our low has jumped northward well into Canada, and almost everything happening in the United States from this storm is in the form of rainfall, not snowfall. The Rockies continue to see some snowfall depending on where you're at uh, with that colder air that has gone ahead and moved in. As we reach towards Saturday here on the 10th, we see this low now developing underneath for Ohio. This is leading to some snowfall opportunities here in the Northern Plains and upper Midwest, as well as continued thunderstorm chances here for the Southeastern and Mid-Atlantic regions of the nation here. Again, Saturday on the 10th. Another interesting factor that has just begun to really develop here by the 10th timeframe is this warmer, drier air that has really established itself over the West. We call this a positive PNA, and as this jumps northward, we typically see a trough develop just to the east of it, and we do see that taking place here, which is why we're seeing these snowfall opportunities in the north central regions of the United States. That is going to be the catalyst for our major, major cold air that begins to move in as soon as Sunday here on the 11th, just four days from now. So confidence is really high that we do see this cold air move in for this time frame as it's happening right around the corner. Uh, we see this area of warmth and higher pressure really expand out west. It's getting wider and it's getting more intense. It's blocking many storms from moving through and it's even shoved our southern stream here way underneath it and it's actually taking aim at the eastern seaboard. It's after this point because of the colder air over the east and the southern stream being forced straight into the eastern states that we could see these two factors link up and cause snowstorms to occur. As we keep going, we see this colder air sticks around. It's not super intense by Monday the 12th, but it is colder in the east, warmer in the west, and it is much colder in the east than we would have been dealing with here starting today on Wednesday, the day that I'm talking to you, all the way through this weekend. It is going to be much warmer this week than it is next week by time we're looking at what we're seeing on screen. Tuesday here on the 13th, we see another reinforcement of this colder air moving in as we see a clipper arriving for the north central states and upper Midwest areas. This is also coming with some Arctic energy and we can see that Arctic blast really, really establish itself by Wednesday the 14th here, mostly seeing snowfall for the Great Lakes from that clipper system. And then by the time we reach into the 15th, uh, we can see that cold air has fully established itself. Now, on this particular model run, we're going to see a very different story on the GFS in a minute here for this time frame, but on this model run, we see the trough advancing and moving in, and we do see a nor'easter off the east coast. The problem is that this nor'easter is moving through ahead of the trough arriving, so we're not really getting it to latch onto the jet stream, and we're not seeing any cold air along the east coast quite yet. But I would say that this is only about 12 hours off 
from seeing something much, much more significant. And this is about eight days away, seven to eight days away. So there is plenty of time for these types of factors to evolve into something bigger. And again, we have model support for something bigger occurring. And we're going to look at that in a moment. This European model does not see no snowstorms, though. We're going to see one actually develop an East Coast snowstorm in a moment. We can see as soon as the next day, another nor'easter type feature is moving off the southeast. But this one's too late now. The jet stream has established itself well offshore as we have Arctic air set up over these areas. And the snowstorm has no ability to latch onto that jet stream and move up the East Coast as the jet stream overall is not quite as favorable later on like this. We do see an interior storm taking place. It's a stronger low, 995 over Iowa, and this is causing widespread snow showers, as you can see, east of the Rockies for, throughout the northern plains and Midwest and Great Lakes here, uh, alongside that Arctic air that is continuing to move in. As we reach Friday the 16th, that low actually becomes a little bit more consolidated over the Great Lakes, and we do see some heavier snowfall establishing itself. But it is important to note that this is around the 10-day mark, which is when we start to really take things with a grain of salt and start to look at the bigger picture instead of specific details. Uh, we're really looking for patterns. We're looking for colder air, jet stream placement, and storm systems and favorable storm patterns to set up. So let's see what happens after this point. We see that trough actually digs much further to the south over the south central states. For Saturday the 18th, we still have a solid warm, dry look over the west coast, and this is going to be forced eastward over time. And we can see that taking place here as we're reaching towards Sunday the 18th, which is when we get a perfect link up. I'll show you our northern jet here, which is doing something like this, and your southern jet is moving through and taking aim right at that northern jet. So this is that perfect link up I was talking about. We have wintry weather occurring for the Carolinas up into Virginia and the southern mid-Atlantic there with some ice and sleet perhaps underneath here for these pink areas and snow for more interior and northern areas. Now, this isn't the perfect setup for the entire East Coast. This is a little bit offshore and it's not the strongest low pressure either, but I've always said that, you know, a strong low doesn't always mean strong impacts and a weak low doesn't always mean weak impacts. So it's important to note that they do sort of correlate but it's not an exact science with that and we can see very weak lows cause some pretty major impacts and we see the low placed pretty well offshore so you end up with a pretty far to the southeast snow system uh, we do see a lot of areas like dc baltimore philadelphia southern new jersey cashing in on this instance uh, but this is a little bit off from something that we would expect to bring the whole mid-atlantic and, and northeast a major snow system Regardless, it's a good sign that the model is showing favorable setups like this and definitely something to pay attention to, specifically because of the fact that this is actually a different time frame than the original one we were looking at yesterday. So this is a second opportunistic time, to say the least. And that one moves out without moving far up into the northeast. We can look at the jet stream placement. It's not directly up the east coast. It actually has a little bit of an eastern curve to it, and the storm system takes a similar path because of that. So you can see it kind of just heads straight off the East Coast. We remain very cold after the 19th, and we actually see some clipper systems moving through, overall staying Arctic over the central and eastern states through the end here. Now, the GFS model that I've been teasing for a while is going to be very similar. Warm in the east, strong low, thunderstorm chances. Nothing's too critically different before this point. It's mostly as we move to the 12th here, and then the 13th and the 14th, that we start to see a much more significant setup. Again, we have the Arctic air advancing, similar to the European model here on the 14th. So that Arctic air is advancing. And we have this southern energy billowing off the southeast. If we can get this to connect and this to connect, we can get some pretty big things. And we are going to see that kind of come together here on this GFS model compared to the European model. Uh, really, it occurs much further south in the southern stream, as you can see, over this eastern area of the Gulf. We have Arctic air really far to the south, so a very intense trough here. That's likely due to this very intense ridge out west. It's kind of an equal energy thing, so you see equal troughing to the east of a ridge. Now... As we advance this a little bit, we start to see this become a snow system, especially overnight Thursday into Friday. That's the 15th into the 16th. And this is technically within 10 days. We're not quite 10 days out by this point, but we are beyond seven days. So it's still in the late medium range. I would say this is still a point where we can see significant changes. Hence why we see two different models showing 
a little bit of a different setup. They both have the storm. They both have the cold air. Those are the types of details we expect to similarly occur uh, with something that's within 10 days. But the exact details and placement and timing are the things that can still change. So we're still monitoring this. It's not a sure thing yet, I guess, is the point that I'm getting at. As we advance this, it quickly becomes apparent that this is set up to be a very major snow system. We have a 994 a lot closer to the east coast in this instance, kind of right along the Carolina coastline. And we have heavy snowfall developing for the Smoky Mountains, some of the other lower Appalachian mountain range areas. And as we see this move northward, very, very close to the Delmarva, it's actually intensifying in pressure. 992 here, we see heavy snowfall throughout areas of eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, western Virginia, the state of West Virginia, eastern Kentucky, eastern Ohio, almost the whole state of Pennsylvania here, northern New Jersey, and then into southern New England, where this thing is still advancing northward. And we see this low hover right around the coast, which is going to make it a little bit of a less favorable storm if you're immediately along the coastline of the Mid-Atlantic or southern New England because this low is so close by, uh, typically we don't see pure snow right underneath the low pressure system. It usually brings with it very warm air, whether it's maybe not very warm, but warmer, milder air. Not always at the surface though, sometimes it's at the middle layers and that's when you end up getting sleet when it's able to fall initially as snow in the very high atmosphere melt into rain, and then maybe if the surface is well below freezing, it refreezes into a an ice droplet instead of snow. Uh, and that's likely what we're seeing along the coast here that hovers right around Boston. We're getting heavy interior snowfall, though, and right around the main coast before eventually moving out. Now, after this point, around the 19th, when the European model showed a major snow system, we do have a storm system. We do have cold air around, not quite as much, but we do have cold air and that is the two ingredients that you need. So this time frame still looks quite favorable for the GFS model as well as the European model. It's just cashing in on the European model. We're a little bit off here on this GFS for this 19th threat as well. We can see another round of Arctic air is kind of getting ready to occur. A lot of it is set up a little bit more horizontally, which is usually going to favor these northern areas for snowfall chances as opposed to the south which is why we're likely seeing this kind of setting up towards the end of the model run where the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, upper Ohio Valley into parts of the Mid-Atlantic is seeing snowfall, but areas to the south are seeing rain. We do end up with a northern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, and then New England snow system there at the end. But again, the specific details aren't too critical. The bigger picture for the end of the model run here is that that trough does elongate horizontally and creates more of a northern setup at that point as far as temperatures. Now, speaking of temperatures, here's a European model where we deal with crazy high temperatures over the, the coming days. Here's today on Wednesday where we see very warm compared to normal over the plains. Not quite as warm, but still significantly warm in the east as well. Thursday is pretty similar, although a lot of the warmest temperatures are moving eastward. And then for Friday, we see areas like the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic starting to get even warmer. And Saturday may be the warmest day for the southeast and mid-Atlantic overall before we see this cold air finally move in. And you can tell this isn't the most major Arctic blast in the world, but when you just saw 20 to 25 degrees above normal and you see this cool down move in that brings maybe 5 to 15 degrees below normal, that is a huge, huge flip. We're talking 30, 40 or more degrees. So it's going to feel very significant even though historically it's a pretty typical cool down. As we advance past this one, though, we do see a little bit of a milder phase for the 13th, 14th before we get an even more significant Arctic air mass along the East Coast for the 15th into the 16th. Again, right around when we would see our first threat of a major nor'easter snowstorm. Immediately afterwards, again, we get a milder little push here for Saturday the 17th along the eastern seaboard before we get an even more major cool down here for Sunday the 18th and beyond along the eastern states. This time, this is a very significant Arctic blast, no matter how you put it. We see that cold air kind of continue. We do see, again, the theme is that warmer air works its way in in between each cool down. And we could see a huge mass of Arctic air that looks primed to move back in once again. So no end in sight really for this European model. We still have a very warm, high pressure look out west that's gonna allow for these cooldowns to keep scraping over top and into the eastern states instead of moving straight into the west. The GFS model's a little less cold. We see this warmer air. We see the initial cooldown, which is similar. 
Uh, a warm-up that's a little bit more significant in between these two cooldowns, and then this one is much less significant around the 16th, 17th, maybe why we don't really cash in here. Uh, and then we see a more significant Arctic Air Mass try to set up towards the end of the model run, but it's not able to establish itself quite as well as this GFS model, com you know, it really sets up a southeast ridge that looks to stay put here. The European model does not have this feature even nearly to this degree, but the GFS model does show it being a major factor as we move down the road, and it's something to consider. Total precipitation is similar. We're seeing the West continue to look less and less active as they look to move into a period of higher pressure, warmer temperatures, not very supportive of a lot of precipitation. We can tell that a lot of our storm systems are moving along the eastern edge of a trough, and we know this because they're moving upward. This is indicative of colder temperatures behind and over top of these storm systems as they're moving through. So this is happening earlier on as a trough is moving through. A lot of this precipitation is similarly moving northward as that trough is advancing, and then eventually we get a lot of activity near and offshore of the east coast, which is when we have Arctic air set up over the entirety of the eastern states. Total snowfall here on the European model is a massive increase for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, parts of the Mid-Atlantic like the Delmarva and southern New Jersey here, not so much for others like northern New Jersey or Pennsylvania or southern New England, and then we do see the northern areas of New England getting a lot as well. The GFS model, on the other hand, has a lot of the areas that the European model shows snowfall getting almost nothing, but everywhere that doesn't get quite as much on the European model, this GFS model says, hey, we're watching for a massive, massive snow system that could drop one to two feet of snowfall for parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. So pretty differing opinions, but when we look at it as an overall pattern, it seems pretty clear what the models are hinting at. It's pretty consistent cold air shots, not a stagnant cold air mass that just sits there for a week, but over and over and over again, we're getting new blasts of cold air. And as that movement is occurring, we are getting influenced by that southern stream, which both of these models do cash in on a snow system, just two separate dates. So the question is, will we get one or the other? Will we get both or will we get neither? And that's what we need to figure out over the coming days. So be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.